So since Elijah Muhammad is not here, he no longer exists, then he can no longer approve or disapprove of the actions that you take. So in the current political climate that you have right now, you have Dick, uh, not Dick, <laughs> Dick Romney, Mitt Romney, and Barack Obama, they are making these campaign ads. And at the end of the ad, it says, this ad was approved by Barack Obama. This ad was approved by Mitt Romney. Mitt Romney, Barack Obama must approve this message. To show what? To show this is from them. Y'all, did you hear what I said? Mitt Romney, Barack Obama put their voice on these ads so that you know that they approve of this message. Now, if the message turned out to be something all messed up, they don't, they put their name on it. They approved of it. Elijah Muhammad is not here. Elijah Muhammad is not among us. How can you say that you represent the honorable Elijah Muhammad when he's not here to approve of the things that you say, do, and write? That's your teaching. That's not the teaching of Elijah Muhammad. Elijah Muhammad only approved of the Muhammad speaks. He approved of message to the black man. He approved of our savior has arrived, how to eat to live. He approved of your speeches that he heard when he was alive. He did not approve nothing since 1977, this nation of Islam that you have built. None of it, Elijah Muhammad has approved. None of it. It is all about a man and his particular opinion. You used to be the national representative of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. You no longer are. Because Elijah Muhammad no longer exists. It's a fabrication. He can't approve or disapprove of the things that you do. I was listening to the uh, speech that uh, the minister made uh, last Sunday, I believe, October 21st, I believe, that's what it was, and one of his student ministers was declaring to the world that Elijah Muhammad is alive. Elijah Muhammad would be 115 years old and he is 115 years old he is alive it's a possibility that a 115 year old person could be alive today it's possible and he said that so and so is over 100 and so and so is over 100 and this person is over 100 but the problem here is they never have been declared deceased. And you have never had any contact with Elijah Muhammad. Have you seen Elijah Muhammad lately? Have you talked with him? Have you seen Elijah Muhammad in a dream? Minister Louis Farrakhan does not claim to personally talk to Elijah Muhammad. He's seen Elijah Muhammad. In the United States under law, I believe that after seven years, you are declared legally dead. So until you show clear, convincing, and overwhelming evidence that Elijah Muhammad is alive, then you are teaching a lie. That's falsehood. That's spookism. That's mystery crap and that's something that Elijah Muhammad taught against Elijah Muhammad never taught that he was the Christ of the Bible he was 
the, the camp, the real Jesus being raised from the dead. Elijah Muhammad only taught that he was the last messenger of Allah. And um, the last messenger of Allah is higher than the prophet Jesus. Or this Christ person. I don't understand where, you, where you're getting this from. But see, that's what happens when you get religious fired. All kinds of stuff is thrown back and forth to try to support some type of agenda. What is your agenda? Because this is not Elijah Muhammad's teaching. Elijah Muhammad taught us a form of reality, not more spookism and spirituality and divinity. That's not in his teaching. What you hear is not Elijah Muhammad's teaching. And again, you don't have to take my word for it. Study the messenger, everything Elijah Muhammad left. Study it for yourself. Brother Farrakhan glorifies himself in an arrogant manner. Like he is the ultimate Authority on Elijah Muhammad. Yes, you you spoke for Elijah Muhammad. You represent Elijah Muhammad. But at the same time, here you are with your chest all out. I represent Elijah Muhammad. I'm sitting in his place and, and all like this. Why would he? I know y'all gonna keep getting angry at me. Why would Elijah Muhammad want you sitting in his place? When you left him, you left the teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. You went back to drinking and smoking and probably whoremonging. Who knows what you did? Growing a beard on your face. Took your bow tie off. You said out of your own mouth, Louis Farrakhan, brother, you said out of your own mouth, I became a hypocrite. What's so special about you? That God would choose you to sit in Elijah Muhammad's place. And clearly Elijah Muhammad found nobody worthy of sitting in his place. Because he did not specify. He did not tell or declare an error to his throne. Nobody. He did not choose his son. He did not choose you. He did not choose nobody. He left the seat vacant. And the man was wise. It is probably because he wanted it all to fall down for a reason. Because he wanted to tell you something, but you wouldn't ready. And he didn't have the time to get you ready. Mm. Oh, God, Allah uses who he pleases. Louis Farrakhan, brother, you did not fight for his legacy. You joined those who destroyed his legacy. You joined the party that knocked down the pillars of the castle. You joined those who helped destroy what your father built. But now you are so arrogant. Yes, I'm saying that in a respectful manner, but now you're so arrogant with your chest all out like you are the ultimate authority on Elijah Muhammad. And you're not. Oh, man. And see, this is why. Since 1977, since 1977, the time you decided to rebuild the nation of Islam. And that's a good thing. Oh, it's a good thing. Ain't no doubt about that. People should give Brother Minister Louis Farrakhan his credit. And stop trying to lambaste. Stop being jealous and envious. He's a, he's a good man at heart. Things happen to people. We have to be careful how we judge folks. Because see, I did not walk in... Louis Farrakhan shoes. I did not walk in Malcolm's shoes. I don't work. The only shoes I can walk in is my own shoes. 
We are on the outside looking in. And we have a lot to say. I can't judge Louis Farrakhan. The only thing I can do is try to guess certain things. But since, but this is something I don't have to guess. Because Louis Farrakhan began the rebuilding process of his nation of Islam. Not the nation of Islam built by Elijah Muhammad because that's gone. That's a thing of the past. Elijah Muhammad does not approve or disapprove of this nation of Islam. Because if Elijah Muhammad was here, then all of Elijah Muhammad's children would be together. But you have Louis Farrakhan, you have Eric Muhammad, you have Silas Muhammad, you have everybody is scattered everywhere. Because Elijah Muhammad is not here to put it all together. Everybody doing their own thing. Just like how all the Christians, the Catholics and the Protestants and the Mormons, all everybody, all the everybody Christian, but everybody separated from Christ. Because Christ is not here to bring them together. So everybody doing their own confused version of what they think Jesus wants. Everybody doing their own confused version of what they think. Elijah Muhammad won't. But since 1977, Brother Louis Farrakhan, and I was there, see, I can talk. See, y'all don't understand this, and I don't care if you don't understand. See, I can talk because I was there helping. I stood in front of Louis Farrakhan willing to take a bullet. I stayed up all night long making bean pies. On the street selling final calls. Up and down the roads of this country. From the east coast, west coast, the north and the south. I was everywhere. Doing the work. Helping this man build. I have, the, I can talk. Has nothing to do with being jealous or anything. I can talk. Because I was trying to help. And did help. And will continue to help. In anything that we do of good. But since 1977, if Elijah Muhammad and Master Farah Muhammad approve of this nation of Islam, then you tell me, you tell us, the questioning audience, not the believing audience. I'm not interested in your belief. I want you to show me with facts and figures. You tell me. That you, Louis Farrakhan, having more money than Elijah Muhammad. Having more resources, less obstacles than Elijah Muhammad and Malcolm. After, since 1977 to 2012, why you are nothing close to what Elijah Muhammad built. You're not nowhere close. Why is that? Because this is not your, this is not the teachings of the messenger. This is your teaching that you put Elijah Muhammad's name on. And that's why many brothers and sisters out here are angry because you are making a claim this Elijah Muhammad's teaching and it is not. This is Farrakhan's teaching. And you are selling Farrakhan's teaching by tacking Elijah Muhammad's name on it just like they sold the new gospel by placing the names of Jesus so-called apostles to be the authors of the of the New Testament when they were not but that's how they sold the New Testament so you're selling Farrakhan's teaching by putting or placing Elijah Muhammad's name on what you think Elijah Muhammad might do a say in this modern day and time. Could be right, could also be wrong. Elijah Muhammad is not here to approve or disapprove. Because Elijah Muhammad no longer exists. And you cannot show with clear, convincing, and overwhelming evidence that he does.
That's something that y'all chosen to believe. Now, during this lecture, Farrakhan also said, and I'm going to go back, and I'm saying this with all respect. This is, re this is with pure respect. Brother Farrakhan said, and he was telling his enemies, kill me, I'm ready to die. My whole family ready to die. And people, people get to clap. Y'all love to clap. You don't really, you're not really listening to what nobody said. You, you hear it on the surface and you just get to clapping because you like Farrakhan or some of you might clap because you like me. Listen to what somebody is saying before you get to clapping. Somebody need to put some kind of tape or some rubber bands around your hands so that you can't clap. Because we really need to listen to what somebody is saying. I know that you believe in Allah. And I know that you are a strong brother. And you said, you can't be killed. And you declare that people clap. Farrakhan said, I can't be killed. But then all of a sudden you say, unless it is the will of Allah. Why you have to put, if you can't be killed, why you have to say, unless it be the will of Allah? Are you doubting that God can protect you? Because if I really believe God was with me, I would tell you and declare, you can't kill me, period. I don't have to add, unless, Unless I'm not sure. Unless I know that what I'm talking about is some bull. Because if God, why can't God protect you? If God created the heavens and the earth and God is so powerful, why God can't protect you from a bullet? Why God can't protect you from a nuclear bomb? Why you have to say, unless? Because, see, you understand the reality is your God have no power like that. You know this, but don't want to admit it. But in a way, you admit it because you said, unless. There's no need to say, unless. Just tell America, just tell Russia, just tell the hateful Negroes out in the street, you can't kill me, period, because God is with me. Don't say, unless, why God can't protect you. You don't have to, you shouldn't have to say unless, unless it's God's will. And why would God want you to die? Why would God want you to be killed? Tell me that. That's the next question. Why would God want you dead? Unless it's, it's his will. To be a martyr? Do you know how many martyrs there are? We have had millions of martyrs. Was that God's will? The reality is this God can't protect us. You have to take matters into your own hand. You have to get the same weaponry 